All right, so today's lesson is Jesus' temptation. Who knows what temptation is? Uh, Who knows what temptation is? Something that you don't want to do, but you're tempted to do. Something you don't want to do, but you're tempted. Go ahead, Kaya. Um, it's like, temptation is like something that you don't want to do, but you know that you shouldn't do, but you do anyways, or it's like something that you get dragged into. Okay, good answers. Temptation yep. is like, for example, sitting in front of candy and your parents tell you not to eat it, but you really want to. Mm -hmm. I have a really big problem with that. It's, this is from eating too much candy. Anybody else want to give it a shot? Temptation? All right. Every one of you are spot on. First of all, temptation is... When you know that you're supposed to do something right, and somebody's whispering in your ear and saying, why don't you do something wrong? Hey, wouldn't you like to do this? Yeah, I know it's not right, but... Always be careful when they say that. It's not right, but... But is funny. Am I reading... So... Who's reading Jesus' temptation? Yeah. Okay, uh, Jalen will read verse 5. You're going to read verses 1 through 4. Okay? You'll read verses 1 through 4 also because Matthias will pick up where you leave off. And you're doing Mark. All right. No, no, just 12 and 13. Just 12 and, verses 12 and 13. All right. Uh, Favor, go ahead and read Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Very loud. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit up into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he felt hungry. And the tempter. The tempter? And the tempter approached and said to him, If you are a son of God, tell him. These stones to become rolls of bread. Okay, and read me verse 4 also. But he answered, It is written, Man must live not on bread alone, but on every word that comes from Jehovah's mouth. Okay. Um, Kaya, I'm going to have you read chap uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, please. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan River. The Spirit led him into the desert. There the devil tempted him for him to Jesus ate nothing during that time. At the end of 40 days, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on only bread. Okay. And Anaya, I'm going to have you read Mark 1, verses 12 and 13. The Spirit continually drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. Okay. Uh, Matthias, go ahead and read Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. Okay. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, yep. uh, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off for the scriptures' sake. Mm -hmm. He will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you uh, up in their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on the stone. And verse 7 also, please. Jesus responded, The scripture goes to say, You must not trust the Lord to your God. Okay, and Jalen, actually I told you verse 5, would you, instead of verse 5, would you read verse 9, 9 uh, through 12, please, 9 through 12. Here, let me help you out here a second. Okay, so you're in chapter 4, and these little numbers here are your verses. Go to the next page and find where it's the little number nine. 
you start reading there and you read through the little number 12. Okay? You okay to do that or do you know? Okay, no problem. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read it then. <clears throat> it says here in Luke 4, verse 9, it says, and Then he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you're the Son of God, throw yourself down from there. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said... You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now I'm going to go back to Matthew chapter 4, verse 9. So the devil comes to Jesus again, says, And he said to him, If these all these things I will give you if you'll fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. Now, when Jesus, oh, that's it, and angels came and ministered to him, and that's the end of that. Back to Luke, we're going to read verses 5 through 8. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you, and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. And then jumping ahead to verse 13, it says, And now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Every one of us wants to do good. Every one of us. Is there anybody here that doesn't want to do good? We all want to do good, don't we? But there's always that little voice whispering. To do something bad. To do something wrong. Now, let me set this up for you. Jesus had been fasting. Do you know what a fast is? Yes. Haven't been eating. Haven't been eating. Jesus hadn't eaten or drank anything for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, I have never gone that long without food or water. Pastor has. He's gone 40 days without food. And when you... Go 40 days without food. You're hungry. Some of you guys, if you go 40 minutes without food, you're hungry. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, Will, you, you smile because you know that's you, right? That's me. You know that's you. See, this, this is little Hoover over here. He just <laughs> sucks that food down just like a vacuum cleaner. You laugh, but I'll bet you do too. And I'll bet Dominic does. And I'll bet Favor does. And I know I know Matthias does. And I've seen y'all eat. I've seen you guys eat. I know people like they're shoveling in with both hands. I'm pretty sure it was 40 or 36 days that my mom fasted. Yeah. She had water and Right. But you get hungry. When you haven't eaten for 40 days and 40 nights, you get hungry. And so the devil comes to Jesus after 40 days without eating. And what's the first thing that he does? Hey, Jesus, if you're really the Son of God, turn these rocks to bread. Because God will do it. Yes. Let's, well, we'll do that some other time. Jesus said, why don't you turn these rocks to bread? Because you're the Son of God, aren't you? You can do it, can't you? You see, Jesus was born without sin. And even Jesus was tempted to sin. When we do wrong, when we know that we should not do wrong, that's sin. And none of us wants to do that. But we all get trapped into it. We all get tempted. Look, I have fallen into temptation. And I have sinned before. And guess what? It's a constant battle. It's a constant battle. And it's going to be for you too. You will always battle against sin. But you can win. 
Jesus won. When the devil came to Jesus and Jesus was so hungry and he said, Jesus, command these stones to become bread. And Jesus said, it is written. Now what do you mean? What did he mean by that? What did he mean by that? Where was it written? What 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 book was it written in? It was written in the Bible. Now the Bible that Jesus had wasn't as wasn't as long as the Bible we have now. These stories that we have in the Bible, they weren't in the Bible in Jesus' days because he hadn't lived them yet. But Jesus knew the Bible. And because Jesus knew the Bible, Jesus knew what was right and what was wrong. You see, in the Bible, God tells us what is right and God tells us what is wrong. That's why we emphasize to bring your Bible, but not only to bring your Bible to, to church, but also get in the habit of reading the Bible. I got my first Bible when I was seven years old. That was over 50 years ago. And we didn't have easy versions to read back then. All, my parents didn't believe in any of the easy versions. And so all we had was the King James. Now the King James Bible was written in 1611 over 400 years ago. And the language, thee, thus, thou, that kind of language was in the Bible that I was reading. And yet somehow I was still able to understand it. If you don't understand the Bible, ask somebody. There are people, your parents, and if your parents don't know, come and ask us. We'll gladly tell you. When you, if you if you read something that you don't understand, we'll gladly tell you. Why? Because we want you to know the Bible. We want you to know what's right and what's wrong. So Jesus answered right. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. In other words, there are other things more important than eating. I know some of you have a hard time believing that. But there are more important things. And so... The devil wasn't done with Jesus. He said, Jesus, he took Jesus up to the top of the tall building. He said, throw yourself down. Because the Bible says that the angels will protect you. You know what? That's exactly what the Bible said. Satan was trying to use the Bible to tempt Jesus. But you see, Jesus didn't just know that scripture. Jesus knew the other scripture. Do not tempt the Lord your God. God does not want Satan to tempt us. He does anyway because he disobeys. But we have a weapon. And that weapon is knowing the scriptures. Knowing what the Bible says. You can defeat temptation. You don't have to sin. Now... What happens if you do? What happens if you do sin? If you leave the sin in your life, there's going to be consequences. But what can you do about it? Repent. Repent. In other words, stop doing the sin. It's more than just saying, I'm sorry. Now, I know two girls, they're sisters. And they'll go around and they'll hit each other. And they'll say, sorry. And a few minutes later, they're hitting each other again. Sorry. Are they sorry? No. no. Because repenting is more than just saying sorry. Repenting is you stop doing what you were doing. Stop doing wrong. Sorry. 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 Let's not. I can point to any one of you and call you out. Let's not be calling people out. It's not just siblings. It's not just siblings. It's anything. It's anything. When we tell God we're sorry for our sins, look, look, God knows what your heart, look, back there. God knows what your heart is saying. God knows whether you mean it or not. You're not hiding anything from God. But you know, old Satan, he, he wasn't through yet. You see, he's persistent. He keeps on going. He keeps at it. He keeps at it. He doesn't stop. But neither does God. 
So Satan comes at Jesus again. And he shows him all the kingdoms of the world. He says, all these I will give you if you just bow down and worship me. And Jesus said, no. It is written, you will worship the Lord God only. Now, when this, we already said who it was that tempts. God never tempts us with evil. Only the devil does that. But you know what? He doesn't play fair. He doesn't play fair at all. He will. He tempted Jesus after Jesus hadn't eaten 40 days. Yeah, I'm surprised what he didn't do was to bake loaves of fresh bread and come up to Jesus. Smell that, Jesus? Here, have a whiff. You hungry, Jesus? You hungry? That's how, that's how Satan plays. He doesn't play fair. He always comes at you when you're tired. He comes at you when you're hungry. He was fasting just to draw closer to God, which kind of seems weird because God was his own father. But he, would, he did that in order for a time of just drawing closer to God. And that's why he was doing that. Satan always comes at you when you're at your weakest. If you're hungry, if you're tired, if you're sick, if you've been hurt by an argument with somebody or you're hurt because somebody corrected you, that's when Satan comes at you and says, they don't really like you. They don't really like you. But you know what? The Bible says that Satan's a liar. Now normally we don't say that to people. But you can say that to Satan. He's a liar. Because that's what he does. You know how you know when Satan's uh, when Satan is lying? How do you think you know when Satan is lying? If his lips are moving. In other words, if he's talking, he's lying. Because the Bible says he's the father of lies. <clears throat> now Jesus was relying on scripture to judge between right and wrong. That's our only... This is it. This is our only source. People will tell you that something is right, but if it doesn't agree with what's in here, they're not telling you the truth. Last thing I want to tell you, because i got to quit here, is that the Bible only tells us about these three temptations that Jesus had. But if you remember the last scripture that I read in Luke 4.13, it says that the devil left him until a more opportune time, which meant he kept coming. He kept coming. He kept coming. Guys, eyes forward here, please. Eyes forward. Eyes forward. We're not done yet. The Bible says that when we are tempted, that Jesus is our high priest. And it's not like he's never been through it. He's been through it before. You're not, you're not running into anything that Jesus hasn't run into already. And yet he defeated it, and he'll defeat it for your for your sake. You don't have to fall to sin. You don't have to sin. All right, let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your this lesson. We thank you for your love. Lord, I pray a covering of protection over every young person here, that they would understand that they have a weapon when they're tempted to sin, and that weapon is the Word of God that they don't have to sin. And Father, I pray that you would anoint them and that you would cause them to cry out to you, that their dependence would be upon you, that they would not sin, that they would leave, live lives free of sin. But let them know also that when they do sin, that they have an advocate with you because you felt those temptations and you successfully defeated them. And let us... Let everyone here know that when we do mess up, we can go to God. We can go to your Father, and he will forgive us. And we thank you and we praise you for everything that you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.